Hello Blue Lakers, Greg Duzinski here again from Chicago in my apartment, social distancing. Um, we had a lot of great response to my last video so we thought we'd do another one. I spoke in the last video that I was probably going to talk about Melodic Minor next. That is still on my docket and I'm going to talk about that but I think before I do I want to take this video and try to codify some of the ways we were talking about practicing scales last time. We talked about a number of different ways that we could work through the modes of a scale to sort of alleviate boredom and keep things from just being the same all the time. Well, the whole story about that is that that is a whole way of practicing that I learned from the great saxophone player Rick Margitza. I still take lessons from Rick with, from time to time, and he is a wonderful, inspiring teacher. And Rick learned it from a saxophone player and educator named Gary Campbell, who taught saxophone players all over the world, including the great Michael Brecker. And we have an good authority that this is the way Michael Brecker practiced, this is the way Rick practices, so it's the way I practice. And it has to do with these different directions we we're talking about. Um, Practicing things this way really ensures that you hit all of the different um, crazy points on your instrument, places where you, there might be little technical problems that you need to work out. Um, approaching it and attacking it from these different directions really isolate those and are really good for those. Um, I practice scales this way, I practice chords and triads this way, I practice intervals this way. It's really kind of an endless uh, endless way of practicing stuff. But in order to make this easier for us so that we're not just kind of randomly working through it all the time, let's, uh, let's put some labels on some things and let's talk about a way that we can replicate and kind of be more organized about this way of practicing. Now. To review really quickly, we were in the key of C concert, and we talked about practicing the, the modes of the C concert scale. That is to say, um, a major scale starting on the different notes of that scale. <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. And within that, we were also talking about varying the ways we played those to make sure we weren't getting locked into one way of doing it. So, let's talk about those different ways of playing things for a moment. Um, the first one we talked about was a combination or a direction, and I should say before we even start that, there are four directions that we can practice any and everything in. Um, those directions are up, up, down, down, up, down, and down up. Now there's going to be a lot of information coming at you in the next 5 to 10 to 15 minutes. Um, I've also included a PDF sheet that shows some of these things that should be linked. Hopefully you can get it. Um, if not, you know, we'll figure something out to get that information to you. But I'll try to be as clear as I can in this video for how we how we approach this. Direction one is up up. Direction two is down, down. Direction three is up, down. And direction four is down, up. So, if I were going to do the modes in C major, again, concert C major, and I were going to do direction one, this is what it would sound like. Up, up. Each subsequent was going up after the first one. Um, direction two is down, down. Here's what that would sound like. Etc., etc. 
Direction three is up, down. Right, etc., etc. And direction four is down, up. Etc. Etc. So that shows you the four directions, and it kind of makes it a little bit more organized, so that when you're practicing, you can be a little more specific with yourself and say, "I'm going to do F major, diatonic modes, direction two," and then you'll have a uh, a process that you can do that and really be efficient in your practicing with. Now, there's another piece, because if you noticed when I just demonstrated directions one, two, three, and four, the direction I was moving through the scale was always ascending. For example, in direction one, up, up, and then the next one, next one, see it's going up the scale. In direction three, which is up, down, it was the same thing. Going up the scale. Now, if we're not careful, that will become a habit and we don't get as full a workout as we could. So, within each direction, there's an A and a B. There's one A and one B. One A is up, up, ascending. One B is up, up, descending. Here's one B. You hear each one was going up, it was up, up, but the direction that we were moving through the scale was down. Make sense? Here's 4B. So 4B, let's talk through what that means. Direction 4, that's down, up, and B means we're moving down through the scale. sense? I hope so. By organizing our practicing this way, we can get a lot more done quickly because when you look at the whole routine, 1AB, 2AB, 3AB, 4AB, that's a lot of material. Um, it may be too much to tackle in one day. So you can be a lot more organized with what you're working on from day to day. My advice, especially if you're just starting off practicing scales this way, is not to take all four directions every day. Maybe take one key that you're working on and pick one or two directions and limit your practicing to that and really get that ingrained in your fingers and in your ear. Um, now you'll have to keep track of that. I use a notebook just to make sure that you're hitting all the different directions through each different key. But that's a really good way to get started, is to uh, limit your work to maybe one key a day or a week and one direction a day. So again, what would that look like? Let's say that I was going to practice today and the intention that I am laying out for myself is I'm going to do diatonic modes in the key of E major, I'm going to do direction 1A. Here's what that would sound like. Keys sticking. up, going up.
up through the scale. Again, don't feel like you have to do all 12 keys every day. Don't feel like you have to do all four directions every day. It's a lot of work and it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Um, this is a way to organize your practicing from day to day to ensure that you're doing all sorts of good, good work through these different keys. Now, the next time we get together, the next video I do, we're going to talk about melodic minor and how to work this system through melodic minor. And then after that, we're going to get into things like triads and seventh chords and intervals. And to give you an example, just a, a, a quick example of how you can do these types of things, here's an example of doing just major thirds. These are, this is completely aside from a key. There's no key involved with this. I'm just going to play major thirds. Um, I'm going to do direction one, so up, up, and I'm going to move up in half steps. <laughs> Right? Or I could do direction three, which is up down. The possibilities are endless and they really do a lot to develop your technique. So Next, so work on that. Again, one key. If you're really, you know, chomping at the bit and you have your keys together, do one key every day. If you need some more time, if you need to take this a little bit slower, maybe spend one week on a key and do a couple different directions every day. The important thing is to be methodical, to keep track of what you're working on, to hit all the different directions, and to eventually work through all 12 keys. Slow practice is the key here. Don't feel like you have to fly through these things or play 16th notes at metronome equals 200 or anything like that. Slow practice is so important. When I first started working this way, or, or even now, when I'm taking a new scale sound or a new intervallic set or a new line or whatever and I start to work it through this routine, I move very, very slowly. Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, I'm going to... Let's assume that I am just starting to work on those major thirds I showed you a moment ago. I might start this slow. Or even slower than that. The point is to really hear, understand where those sounds are on your instrument and be able to work it through nice and relaxed. If you're practicing quickly, you're going to learn very slowly. But if you practice slowly, you're going to learn quickly. It's a paradox, but it's true. All right, that's enough for today. Um, to review, four directions. Direction one, up, up. Direction two, down, down. Direction three, up, down. Direction four, down, up. Each one of those directions has two subsets, A and B. Subset A is moving up through the scale. Subset B is moving down through the scale. Again, that's a lot of information. Um, I will make sure to get a PDF sheet that illustrates some of these things that you can look at. Um, happy practicing. Keep working on your scales. Keep taking care of yourselves and being healthy.